Hi friends, it's Ruel Gaviola. Today, let's take a look at Cartographer's Heroes from Thunderworks Games. So let's take a look at what's inside the Cartographer's Heroes box. Uh, this is an early version of the game, so it'll be slightly different when the gets to the Kickstarter backers. Um, if you'll notice, this is the original box. Uh, this is the size that Cartographer's Heroes will eventually end up being. If you notice, too, this is what's really cool. I love this, how this creates one whole picture. So this box will be the size of this in the final version. But let's take a look inside, shall we? So here's Cartographer's Heroes. We have the instruction manual, right? Just a quick look at the components, game setup, how to play, different cards, adds uh, some new things as well, which we'll take a look as we uh, play the game. These are the different scoring options, uh, how to combine cartographers with cartographers' heroes, and also the solo mode, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, here's inside here are the main cards of the game, right? So you have the seasons, just like in Cartographers, right there. You have the A, B, and C, D, those are the scoring options, right? Uh, winter, that's also there. These are the heroes. This is what's new in Cartographers Heroes, right? So you have the ambush cards, right? Uh, some new ambush cards. We have the Gorgon um, Gaze, Giant Troll Ravage, Zombie Plague, and Dragon Inferno. And then the heroes, right? Ren the Lioness, Dobrik of Lokheim. Freyla the True, and Val of Jolev. And then these are, let's see, oh, these are the main cards here. Again, this is the main part of the game, just like in Cartographers, but new cards. And, of course, all the new scoring as well. Okay, and we'll set up a game soon and stick around and we will play that with the new cards here. Uh, it also comes with the skills mini expansion, okay, number two. So there was a, a mini expansion for the first cartographers. This is another one. Very simple to add uh, where you're going to spend your gold um, to activate certain powers. I believe it's three per game. Um, after we set up and play, uh, we, we shall see. Okay, so you can spend those. Uh, this is the cartographers heroes map, right? A big old um, pad of maps to play on. And this is what's cool about this game. The Kickstarter version will contain, you will, well, here's the pencils. Uh, it will contain three different map, um, three new map items here. Oops. Let's see if I can get this out all right. Okay. So this one's a Nebulous Plane of Flame, right? So the three different map packs that it comes with, uh, these are going to contain not only new maps, but new mechanisms as well. And this, this one is what we're going to be playing today is the Volcano, right? So um, we'll get to that during the game, but it comes with new map sheets. This is 75 sheets, double-sided, a couple of changes of setup, and this one contains Volcano cards. So the Volcano is going to expand on your map as you play. And let me get these here. We have the Rain of Fire, Seismic Tremors, Lava Flow. Uh, those will be added into the deck and we'll play on. Okay, so that's a look inside the box. Let's play a game. Okay, friends, so here we are. Uh, we are going to be playing Cartographer's Heroes. Um, I have set it up here for a solo game so you can follow along at home. And when you get your copy, you can play along with me. So here we are. Um, I am a cartographer mapping the Queen's Land. And this is going to be played over four seasons. A, B, C, and D um, are the scoring um, objectives. Uh, for each season, we will have different scoring objectives. So in the spring, we would do A and B summer B and C, and so forth. I'll leave those there. Um, these are the two scoring um, objectives for this uh, season, the Fawn Lost Thicket and the Trello Monastery. So we want to, we will earn two reputation stars or points for each forest space in the tallest vertical column of forest spaces. Okay, so the more column, uh, the larger vertical column you have, the more points you will score for trees or that type of terrain. And then the monastery one is earn six points for each cluster of five or more village spaces adjacent to the edge of the map. So here you can see here these are adjacent and it's a cluster. So you would get six points. OK, 
Okay. Um, I'm also playing with the mini skills expansion that comes um, with the new Kickstarter. We have randomly drawn these three. I believe there are eight total, but we've drawn three. Uh, these you may trigger once per season by spending the gold on your um, sheet um, by crossing it off. So here is the gold marker here. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second, how you get gold. But anyways, you would spend the gold in order to trigger this ability. Um, and we will talk about that as we play the game. Um, each uh, season has a time marker here. Once you reach that number, well, you're going to draw cards one at a time. Once it reaches that number, that will signify the end of the season. There are also monsters in the deck um, or ambushes. Those are going to mess with you a little bit. In the solo game, we are going to start on the right side. Uh, how you fill it out is in the solo game, a monster will come out and you're going to start here and go around the edge of the map, um, whatever way it says on the card, and you will fill in the ambush or the monster at the first available spot. So we'll get that in a second. There's also heroes that will fend off monsters. Okay, so let's take a look here. I'm going to start the game. This is Cartographer's Heroes. The first one is the Wildwood Garden. So that's a time track of two. So we still have six more to go until the end of the spring. Uh, here you're going to choose one of the terrains, either the forest or the farmland here, and then make this shape on your thing. Um, so I'm going to try to get, and these can be rotated, right, and flipped over like this or like that. Um, I really want to get this Fawn Lost Thicket, so I'm going to, um, let's do this. Um, I really want a big column of, um, forest, so I'm going to do this here for this. Oops. So happy for erasers. So these are the forest spaces or lollipops as I like to call them, not very artistic. Uh, one cool thing uh, that you can do, uh, my wife does this all the time when we play cartographers, she uses different colored pencils for each type of terrain. It looks really pretty at the end. It's like a, you know, like a nice looking Tetris uh, uh, board. So here is this, if the game ended, or if the round ended now, I would get to four points because this is my longest vertical column. Okay, let's continue. The next one is the Timber Grove. So this is one, so it's, we're at three. Plenty of time in spring, folks. So I'm either going to draw, so I'm going to draw some more trees, which is great because I want that thicket. I'm either going to do two columns of two squares each, if you see that one, right? That's interesting. Or I can choose to do this one, a little L shape, and I gain a coin, which I believe I'm going to do because it's going to fill out real nice right here. Okay, so there's that. Okay, and I get a coin, so I'm going to fill this in here. And then when I spend coins, I just put an X through it. Now you can also get coins by um, cover or uh, surrounding a mountain, right? See, each mountain has a coin right next to it. As long as you surround it orthogonally, like up um, above it and below it, and then to the left and right, you immediately get a coin. And then when you get a coin, of course, you can spend here. So during this one, I have one coin. I can afford these two um, powers once a season now. During the draw phase, draw a one by three shape instead of one of the depicted shapes. So I could have done that for here. Instead of drawing that shape, I can spend one to use that ability and I would exhaust it for the round. And then I would uh, use that shape to fill in that. I can also do disguise. During the draw phase, draw a one by one space that is considered both forest and water terrain. So that's sort of cool. Uh, this one, it would count as two terrains, right? Instead of one. And again, I spend the one gold and exhaust it and then that would be it for that um, season. Uh, but let's continue, shall we? Ooh, the Reign of Fire. Okay, so I didn't mention this, but now is a good time to mention it. I am playing with map pack number one, I believe it is. Uh, this is the map pack called Neblis. It is the Plane of Flame. So if you see it here, there is a volcano, right? And that volcano is ready to erupt. Not, not too happy, I guess, about us... Uh, being cartographers in the land. So anytime one of these comes out, you have to draw the sh uh, shape just like uh, the normal cards, right? So here is like this little crooked L or sideways L and you will get a gold or you do two single boxes here. But what this is, you have to draw it adjacent to the volcano or adjacent to um, another volcano uh, space. So 
what you're doing is the volcanoes erupt and the lava is flowing, right? And these destroy things, so these can mess up your scores. They can also help you by, you know, destroying monsters, but they could destroy, you know, certain terrains if, if they rain down on you. Rain, right? Haha. -ha. Um, so this is the start of the volcano here. Uh, let's go this way. I'm going to go, um, I'll go this way here. And I'm going to do, um, you know, I, I'm always down with gold coins. So I'm going to do this L-shaped one here. Uh, let's do the l shape like this. Okay. And then for the volcanoes, you just put the, the X. X marks the spot, right, folks? So these are destroyed. Nothing can go on in them anymore. That's it. Um, I do get a gold coin, and it's going to cost one time. So we're at four. We're halfway through this round. I get the coin. And then let's continue. Ah, there's a hero. A uh, Val of Jolev. Okay. So the hero costs no time. Uh, so I'm moving this down. Hopefully y'all can see it. I'll, I'll put it on the um, camera here. So what you do is draw the sword, right? That represents your hero. And then the hero, depending on the spaces next to it, that you're going to put a little star or a little starburst or whatever. And what that means is if there's a monster that shows up and it lands there, um, you are going to destroy the monster. Okay, the hero is going to protect you. So I definitely want it on the edge somewhere, wherever that monster may show up. Let's put um, our hero. Hmm. If I put the hero here. Okay. Tell you what, I'm going to put the hero here. There's our hero. Uh, Part of my really bad looking sword. <laughs> That's such a bad sword. And then the starbursts are going to go like this boom 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 okay so i'll show you that and that's my hero so uh so i drew the one by one square which is the hero and then i did the markings so um what this does is for the remainder of the game any monsters in the space that the hero um can attack or destroy so if i get a monster right here i just destroy it and that's important because you don't want monsters because they cause you to lose points. Okay, let's continue. Uh, the Coastal Encampment. Uh, it's going to be worth two. So two, three, four, five, six. Again, the hero doesn't cost anything. The Coastal Encampment. So that's a block, right? A square. And this one here, we need five or more. So I'm going to put this right here in the corner. Uh, you know, let's go down here. What the heck? Go down here, right here. And we will put villages or these little house looking things again I apologize for my lack of artistic skills folks but y'all know what i'm trying to draw so there uh no points yet but if i get one more here it's gonna be a cluster of five that's six points let's continue it is woodland crossroads okay here's an interesting choice so two four five six seven eight this is the final one of the round so i could go here and extend my thicket one and it's going to be a cross folks so the cross would get me here. It would just make it, it would get me two more points. But if I put the cross here, that's going to get me six points. So we're definitely going to make um, this one here uh, a cross. Okay. Uh, and then these are the little inns or villages, I mean. And I am covering up a ruin space. The ruin space, I believe in this... Um, version of this game won't matter like in the uh the other now when you start combining things then yes that it might matter um but okay so i've done that um i am at two four five six seven eight okay so let me see if i do i reveal let me check here folks if i remove the hero uh if an ambush if a hero space all over the discard okay so i'm gonna discard this hero so that hero is out of the game okay so we are in summer now um we have our deck ready let's continue oh right off the bat lava flow okay so i need to place three x's in that shape just a straight line we're gonna go here okay because it has to be adjacent to a previously placed lava or adjacent to the volcano so we're going to X out these spots. Uh, you'll notice that I am trying to cover the spots next to mountains, right? Because I do want to keep uh, earning gold coins. Okay, it doesn't cost any time, thankfully. So let's move on from there. So that's a lot of lava on this right side of the volcano. Uh, frontier Dwelling. Okay, so this is a letter-shaped T. 
and then it's either villages or farmland. Um, so I'm gonna, the farmland you gotta get next to the water. I haven't drawn any water yet, but I, I do like this monastery because you're gonna get six points for every cluster of five, and that's to the, uh, the edge of the map. So we're gonna go up here with this letter T looking thing. Ooh, you know what, let's do it this way. Again, I want to try to cover up mountains sides so I can earn coins. Okay, so this is in a village, 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 and a village. Okay. Um, yeah, so right now that's, you know, I need one more. Or one, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay, that's, hey, that's five more, and it's adjacent to the borders. That's another six points, folks. That was sweet. Next card out, Hillside Terrace. Let's put that here. So we're at four now. And you'll notice the seasons get shorter. This is summer's only seven now, and we are scoring letters B and C. So Hillside Terrace, there is the one, okay, that is farmland and water. Okay. So what we're going to do, and it's got to be next to uh, earn three stars for each water space adjacent to two or more farm spaces. So we've got to have the farm spaces like, okay. If we if we put it here, then we have to have a water inside there. Okay, let's do that. I'm gonna put this here again. It's like that Tetris style shape. We'll put the farmland like this, and then hopefully we'll get a water to go in here. Then that would be worth three points, and also covered up one of the mountains, so a little closer to getting a coin. Don't forget, we do have these to spend. I can do one of these per round. I have two coins right now, so I could either do sleight of hand or disguise, um, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Let's continue to the next card. It's another number two card, so we're at six. It's getting close to the end of the summer, and that is the coastal encampment. That is water or um, a village, and it's got to be in a square. And I think, yeah, we did, did we do, yeah, we did do that one last turn. Now, I really want to use that water, okay, because then I can get three points here. But obviously that square doesn't fit. What I can do is use the old sleight of hand by spending one coin. I'll just spend my coin by Xing out that coin. And now instead of that square, I can do a straight line, which just happens to fit perfectly right here so I'll draw some water little wavy things okay and that water there is surrounded by two or more um, farmland so that's worth three points okay yeah I love this game this uh, cartographer is one of my favorite roll and rights or flip and fills if you will and this cartographer's heroes I played it a couple times off camera and I'm enjoying it just as much if not more um, because of the the new um, scoring mechanisms the new expansion and um, you have the heroes and ambushes or monsters, you know, always fun. And it's a great solo game, as you can see. So we're at six. This may be the end. It is the end. Okay, Woodland Crossroads again. So we're going to be putting in um, the forest or the monastery. Uh, you know, I'm going to build up my forest here. We're going to go here. Okay. Make a little cross. And the forest, a.k.a. lollipops. They look like lollipops to me. I'm sure if you're a much better artist than I am, they probably look like a forest. Mine looks like lollipops. Okay, so let's do that. Um, there are, I drew the crossroads there with the forest. And I have one, two, three, four, five. So again, we're not scoring A this round, but we will score A in a later round. Okay, you're going to score each one twice, basically. Uh, so that is the end round because we're at eight. Okay, there were no monsters or heroes this round. That means we're going to add in two more. So one hero and one monster each. They'll go in here. Now I'll shuffle those in just a second. Let's score. So this will get unexhausted. Well, I'll be able to use it again next turn. Uh, let's look at what we have to score. Letter B, the monastery. I have one and two monasteries that have five or more adjacent to the edge. Six points each. So that's twelve points. Uh, letter C, I did manage to get this here. So it is earn three stars for each water space adjacent to two or more farm spaces. So unfortunately, I just have the one water space. But hey, three points I'll take. So that's three points there. Uh, gold, I have one gold that I have not spent. Hey, no monsters. That's twice in a row. Are we going to see a monster this round? Stick around, friends.
<laughs> okay, so now we are on fall, and we will be scoring letters C and D this round. Uh, letter C is Ulam's Wallow. We did that already. That's the farmland and the water one. And finally, D is Dwarven Hold. So this is earn eight reputation stars for each complete row or column of filled spaces that includes a mountain space. Okay, so we're really trying to get the columns filled up and it must include a mountain. So I'm like about halfway done here. And also this as well. Filled, remember, just anything that's within those. So even these destroyed ones are filled. Okay, those count as filled. So we are doing C and D. And just to peek ahead of time here, uh, winter, we're gonna be doing D and A. And again, the season gets shorter. This is seven, it'll be six for winter, okay? Um, and let's go. So we do have a new monster, new hero on the deck. Uh, the first one out is a lagoon. Okay, water. So we are scoring this one here. So how can I get water? Um, okay. Well, if I put water here, okay, it's next to one farmland. I need to get another farmland next to it in order to score it again. So hopefully we can get a farmland there. Okay. Oh, I did, sorry. Okay, so I did, I'm doing this one here. So I've got to go like this. That's the shape that I did here, this shape here. Uh, so that's gonna give me a gold coin. So I have two to spend now. Um, okay, let's go to the next card. Oh, there it is. The Dragon Inferno has showed up. This is an ambush. So in the multiplayer game, uh, you would normally pass this, uh, you would pass your score sheets to the left or right or wherever it tells you to. And then your opponent would score, uh, write a monster on anywhere in your score sheet. Basically, it's there to mess you up, right? Because also any um, monsters that are not surrounded, each space is going to get you negative points. And let me check the rules on that real quick. Uh, the monsters, or the ambushes, I call them monsters. I mean, that you do draw a monster, but they're called ambushes. Um, you are going to score each, each empty adjacent space to a monster space is negative one point. So this one here, and again, you can turn it around, whatever. Um, you're going to look here for the solo game in the top right corner. I don't know if it's going to show up on the camera, but there are four little boxes here and they're, one of them is filled in. That's going to tell you the corner to start. And you're going to follow this, these arrows here. So I start in the left corner. I'm going to go clockwise and try to attempt to place the dragon at Inferno onto my map. So this one, let me see if I do it this way, I can probably, nope. I, oh yeah, I could fit it there. Well, I try to go along the edges first. And then if I can't do that, I move one square in and try to fit it and so forth. So there are, I don't think there are any spots here that are going to be able to take one, two, three. Let's see, we'll go this way or this way. If I flip it over, no, one, two, three. Nope. Okay. So I'm, so I'm going, I start in this corner that will not, let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, it will go right there. Okay. So if I transpose it like this, yep. Okay. So I'm going to put the letter D for dragon inferno. Okay. So that monster is there. This monster is going to get discarded now out of the game. And right now, I'm going to be losing points for the spaces that are open next to the dragon. Okay, so let's try to fill that up, shall we? Um, whoops, I moved this here. We're in fall. That's the lagoon. Uh, move the dragon off. Next card is a coastal encampment. Ooh, more water. Can I get this? I, I really need... Um, ooh, okay. That would be nice. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna spend a gold to do my disguise. Okay, so I spent the gold. My disguise is draw a one by one space that is considered both forest and water terrain. I'm gonna put that right here. Oh, no, you know what? No, I need farmland. Okay, take that back. I have not spent it. I need farmland, not a forest. Okay, so I'm unexhausting that or re-exhausting it, or re-unexhausting it. <laughs> I don't know how to talk. Um, coastal encampment. So it's got to be a box. Now, I could do sleight of hand again. 
that might be the way to go folks if I do slide a hand then I could do this one here uh, going across and that would be a farmland that'll be right next to here Ooh. otherwise yeah you know what I'm gonna do that oh it's gotta be it's gotta be water though yeah, that doesn't really help me I, I need farmland so we're gonna just go with the water let's see hmm Oh, you know what? I'm going to put the water like this. If I go here. Ooh, that's a good puzzle. Okay. I'm going to put the water straight down here. Okay. So I put the water straight down here because, again, I'm trying to fill up rows or columns in order to get the dwarven hold um, bonus. Okay, so I need one more here. And I'm getting closer here. Okay. So we're at three now. Let's move to the next card. It is Woodland Crossings. Oh, that one's showing up a bunch this time. So we're at five now. We're at seven. So it's getting close to the end here. Um, that is the forest space. Interesting. I could go down here. That would be nice. Yeah, you know what? I will use the sleight of hand this turn. Spend that gold. Spend the gold. I'm going to put the forest over here okay or the lollipops as I like to call them okay okay so what I did there I'm basically ensuring myself that I'm going to score this entire column at the end of the round all right so we've got two four five let's see what's next it is oh it's a hero Oh, we had this. Did we have this one? Yeah, I believe. No, no, we had the other hero. So this is Dobrik of Lorkheim. Uh, so again, I'm going to place or draw the sword for the hero, and then I place the little starburst there to show where they may attack. Um, and you can leave them. Some of them can go off the map, so you, just so you can fill up spaces. Um, I might do that over here. Okay. Let me check the rule on the heroes. The heroes. Hit markings do not fill space. It may be placed overlapping already filled spaces or extending off the edge of the map. Cool. So I could put it over here. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So I'm gonna put, let's let's do let's just do it this way. I'm gonna put the hero here. And then that would put a starburst here and a starburst here. Okay. Just in case a monster shows up, that'll be taken care of. And this hero goes out of the game. We're still at five. The next card is, oh, Lava Flow. So uh, three X's that are need to be adjacent to the volcano or more lava. And it will destroy stuff. Um, so we're going to do it this way here. Okay, X, X, X. Okay, the lava has destroyed that part. And the next one, ooh, Kethra's Gates. All right, cool, cool, cool. This is perfect card for me. Um, I want to go here with Farmland. All right, so that's going to be able to score my water as well. Great card to come out. Next one, Hillside Terrace, and that is two, four. That is the final card of the round. That hits seven. Uh, Hillside Terrace, this one, oh, can I do, th okay, I cannot do, th I've already done my one mini expansion power for this season, so I cannot do any more this season. I'm going to have to put an L shape, either farmland or water. Let's see, how can we do this? Can we do this one or this one? Toy, I'm going to put the farmland here. We're going to do something funny. I'm going to go this way. Um, and then I'm going to do farmland. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, there's my farm. Because I put the farm here, I'm going to score this column as well. And I, I've surrounded this mountain. I get a gold coin. So one more gold coin. And that is the end of fall. All right. So these, let me see. We're going to go here. Now we are going to add the final monster and the final or final ambush and final hero card. I'm going to shuffle these up. 
Um, I'll shuffle a few more times. Fall is over, but let's score a fall, shall we? Letter C, oh, this is going to get reset. Letter C is Ulam's Wallow. So water next to farm, um, next to two farmland is going to be worth three points. So I've got one water here next to two there. So that's three. Another water here next to two. And then a water here next to two farmlands. So that is one, two, three. That's going to be nine points. Okay. Yeah, nine points. I do have water here, but there's only next to one farm. All right, cool. And then the Dwarven Holds, these are the oh, eight points for each complete row or column of filled spaces that include a mountain space. So here is a column all the way down filled. Again, the uh, dragon does count towards it and it has a mountain space, so that's eight points there. Another column, again, the volcano counts and there's the mountain, so that's two of them for 16. All right. Now the gold, I have two extra gold, so that's two points. Now we do have a monster this turn, so we're gonna count minus points for every empty space. So one here, another one there, and another there. So minus three, not as bad as I thought. Okay, that's not too bad. Oh, I forgot to fill this in. So the first, this second round I had 12, 13. Oh, I also scored 16 here. This will be a better round. Uh, 16, nine is 25, 27, uh, minus three is 24, 24 total. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, now we go to winter. This is the winter. So we're only worried about DNA right now, folks. So the Dwarven Holds and the Fawn Lost Thicket. I'll shuffle these up. They were only six. So again, it's much shorter than the other rounds. And there's enough cards here. I can do a riffle shuffle on the table here. Doon, 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 doon. And a couple of these overhand shuffles or whatever they're called. That goes there, and score sheet, we're looking at Fawnloss Thicket and Dwarven Holds. And the final round, first one out is a settlement. Oh, okay. Um, so let's see if we can try to fill out some more of these here. Yeah, okay, That's we're gonna go right here with a settlement, and that is a village and a village right there. I get a coin, because I chose that one, so one more coin here. Yeah, so I chose this shape, I did the coin, that is going to help me out with this one here. Another column with a mountain for the Dwarven Hold. Uh, next card out is a Lagoon, which we had last round, that's water. How can we, we can do water here, okay, that might work. Um, again, we could go, also go across, but I feel like I have a better shot of doing the ones that are vertical for the Dwarven Hold. So I'm going to do the water here, we're going to do water um, we're going to take, ooh, I can do that shape as well. Interesting. Do I do that shape? So do I do this like T, mini T shape here? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do the little T shape like this. Okay, so that we're doing, okay, so lagoon, so water, 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 water. So I did the T shape. I don't get a gold coin. However, I did one, two, three, four. Oh, this is water. I don't know if you can see it there. But I did surround this mountain, so I get another gold coin. Okay. All right, so I have one, two, three, four to spend. So the haggle now comes in play. This is during the draw phase when an explore card with two choices are, is revealed. Draw both options. That's cool. Okay. So we got two. The next one out, Cathar's Gates. That is cost nothing, and I can fill in one square. Where's the one square that I need? So I've got these two. I could do one here. Or I could go here and take that way I don't lose points for that dragon. Uh, one square here. No, I want the one with the mountain. So maybe here. That would give me a shot. I would need. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that one. Well, this one may fit. Okay, I'm going to go here. So let's put um, a couple of trees here, the forest, right? Um, and then. This one, I have covered up the fourth side of the mountain, so I get another gold coin. Okay. And let's see what happens here. So we're at two. We still got a couple of cards to play, hopefully, for winter. Ooh, Seismic Tremors. So that is going to fill up a space. How can I do this? We can go here, I guess. Oh, hmm. If I go here... Okay, this is already filled. It's got to be next to... And adjacent already. Maybe here. Ah, uh, no. 
I go here. Huh. I don't know, I'm really sure, folks. Maybe I'll let, let's. We'll, no. Yeah, because it's next to a volcano. We'll just go right here. Okay. Hopefully, I won't come back to bite me. Here is Wildwood Garden. So we've got this shape, either trees or farm. It's cost two. So we're at two, three, four now. Getting closer to the end. Uh, the forest, I didn't really do that well on the forest. I have one, two, three, four, five. And again, you're going to score your longest continuous um, uh, vertical column. Okay. Earn two points for each forest space in the tallest vertical column of forest space. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Yeah, there's not much I can do here. Um, but what I can do is try to fill up these uh, columns again. So I, I need to do this shape here. And I can still do... The, one of these powers if i do this one okay no that wouldn't fit with this one no that wouldn't fit either i really want to try to get this one down but i don't know if i can do that um yeah that's not gonna oh that's tough i don't know if i can do that if i do this here okay i'm gonna get another gold coin why don't i do that so i'm gonna go like this and we're going to put trees or lollipops. Okay. And then I'm going to go up here. So that was the shape. It's got two and then one of the trees of the forest. Okay. Like that. All right. Uh, and I did cover up another gold, another gold coin. Always fun to get a point. So one, two, three, four. Let's see what's up next. It is rain of fire. Ah, darn it. Another lava and this time it does cost time and it's either two empty spaces or the little l shape and you get a gold coin again it must be adjacent to a volcano or a volcano destroyed space huh so i can do two there hmm okay well i'm going to do the two times one because i can do one here and then that means I'm that much closer to filling that row. And then another one here. Yeah, we'll destroy this one so the, the hero can't fight off a monster there. All right. So it looks like we're getting really close to the end. It is, oh, it's the Gorgon Gaze. Gorgon Gaze. So the Gorgon is going to be... Again, we start in this corner. It's going to be bottom right, and we are going clockwise, and I have to put that shape on there. Okay, so bottom right, that shape, which I don't think I'm going to be able to do. Uh, one, two, actually, I will be able to do it if I turn it. Okay, so I can't do it anywhere here. I keep going along the line, and again, I'm going to rotate, so it's going to rotate right there. Or actually, it's going to fill in right there. And the Gorgon gaze, unfortunately, I'll put the G for Gorgon, it dodges my hero. It actually destroys my hero right there. All right? Let me make sure. If you're on, if, um, then works in. Yeah. It jumps right into my hero. Okay. So that's the Gorgon. And they're gone. Oh, what was I at? Three, four, five. Okay. So I've got one more to go, folks. And oh, it's another monster or an ambush. Ooh. So this time the giant troll Ravage starts in the upper right corner and will go counterclockwise. Okay, and it is a T. And it will go right there. So I've gone around here, cannot find an open spot until right there. Okay, so, oh, but check it out. Um, because my hero was right there, the troll was gonna go right here like so T for troll it was gonna go land there but my hero has vanquished the troll so no troll there okay so it's destroyed so you get the X there and then the trolls there okay unfortunately the troll also oh no there wasn't oh, so it's three four five okay I still go cool hopefully I can get something good here to finish out my round woodland crossroads that's two so that is Seven, I believe, two, four, five, six, seven. So this is going to be the end of the round. End of the game, actually. But first, I must put that crossroads here. It can either be forest or villages. And the thing is, I cannot fit it in this 
shape. Yep, no shape. So what I'm going to do is use my sleight of hand. I'm going to sleight of hand. I spend one coin. And then I can draw in this shape. That's uh, one by three. And it's going to be probably forest, right? But I do want to see if I can co cover up and get any points for this. So if I do this here, hmm, that's not great. Um, I do cover up that. Oh, I'm on one short. That's a, that's a bummer. If I go here, I'm going to be short there as well. Okay. Well, if I go here, where are the monsters at? There's a monster there. Okay. I'm going to go here. Uh, fill it up with forest spaces. And again, I'm doing the straight line because of my ability that I've used. Okay. And that is the end of the game. Yeah, and now we're going to score uh, letter D and A for winter. So let's look at the Dwarven Holds. Again, these are the rows or columns completely filled. That include a, a mountain space. Okay, and there'll be eight point each. Eight points each. <laughs> uh, so here is a column right here with a mountain space completely filled. Here is another one. Uh, this column is also filled all the way. This column is not. This column is not. Let's see if we got any rows. Nope. One space short of that row. A couple of spaces there short. One space short there. One space short. Oh, so we had one, two, and three. So three times eight is 24 for letter D. And then letter A. This is, again, once we, we did this at the start of the game, now we have completed the circle. These are the four spaces in the largest vertical column. I think it was the five, right, folks? One, two, three, four, five. This one was one, two, three. And I think, yeah, that's pretty much it. There's two here. Okay. So five times two each is 10 points, right? Yeah, two points each. So one, two, three, four, five, 10 points for letter A. Then the gold coins, one, two, three, four, five. And then now we're going to subtract points for the monsters. So we got one adjacent here, uh, one, two, uh, that's destroyed. Three, four, five. These are covered. And then six. So minus six for the monsters, unfortunately. Uh, we have 34 uh, plus five is 39 minus six is 33. Uh, so we're not totally done yet. I'm going to um, add these up here. So let me get my backup piece of paper because I need help with all the help I can get for math. I've got 16. Leave it there for y'all to check out. 16 plus 16 is 32. Plus 24 is 6. 56 plus 33 is 9. 89. So, yeah, I've scored 89 so far, but that is not it. In the solo mode, you are going to actually going to um, subtract some points uh, in order to find out your final score. Okay, so total the numbers of the cards in the lower corners of the four scoring cards in play. So, let's see. This is... Let me get these here. Oh, it's the scoring cards. My bad. These are the scoring cards in play. You're going to subtract these from your what you've scored. So this is um, 14 plus 12 plus 10 plus 20. Okay. And you'll see it says here the one player um, points here. And these are the stars that you so you're going to subtract in order to find out your final score. Uh, so I'm subtracting six, one, two, three, fifty-six from eighty-nine is thirty-three is my final score. And then we go to the chart and you find what you are here. I have scored thirty-three, folks. I fortunately have become a legendary cartographer. So here on your map. Um, you start with your name and then your title you leave blank until you've finished the game. So I am Ruel, the legendary cartographer. Cartographer. And this is the land of Gaviola. I forgot to put a little, um, my little crest here. We're just going to go with the happy face. All right. So that is a solo game of Cartographer's Heroes. And that's Cartographer's Heroes. Hope you had fun. And remember, you can still back it on Kickstarter, but hurry, time's running out. Bye, friends.